introduction of Hive. Hive is a data warehouse infrastructure that is built on top of Hadoop. Hive provides a mechanism to project structure on the data using SQL-like language called HiveQL. Hive uses MapReduce and HDFS for processing and storage retrieval of data. Now that we understand, the data is an HDFS, processing is done by MapReduce. Now there is a, a small uh, uh, point here, it's not exactly uh, MapReduce, right? But for the time being, let's, let's keep it as MapReduce. The advantages of using Hive, it can be used as an ETL tool in the sense you can bring data to a Hive table, modify the data, store it as permanently. It provides capability of querying and analysis. So Hive is actually used by the uh, analyst community who is very good at SQL, can handle large data sets and you can do filters, join, group by uh, all these SQL queries on top of map and reduce. Now if you ask me, can I see the map reduce code created by Hive? No, you cannot see. Hmm? So the map reduce code created by Hive uh, is not visible. You will just get a jar file. You won't even see the jar file. You will see the jar file running, right? Now, the most important point you have to remember is that Hive is expected to be slow. It is slow because ultimately it is MapReduce. It's not like your uh, uh, Oracle or uh, MySQL or something because uh, in, in any RDBMS systems, typically when you write a query, you will expect the results within second, within microsecond. In high, when you write a query, sometimes I have seen queries taking four hours, five hours. Why? Because, you know, it's just an illusion. Where not to use Hive, so this is a very important point, where you should not be using Hive. Hive should not be used if the data does not cross gigabytes. That means if you are not having big data, why are, why are you using Hive, right? You can stick with your traditional tools. If we don't find schema or bringing in schema is difficult or not possible. Now the point is that when you access Hive, you have to create a table. Hive works on the concept of databases and tables, right? And whenever you're defining a table, the table should have a schema. Now, if your data cannot fit into the table, there is no point in loading the data. Let's say you're getting some type of data. Let's say you're getting text data, raw text data, right? Now, in that data, you're not able to find a structure to the data. Imagine, I'm just saying you imagine. Imagine you're getting raw data, plain freeform text, right? So in freeform text data, how do you find a structure? You cannot find a structure. That means you cannot use Hive on top of that data. So you have to use Hive where you can find some structure to the data. Maybe you have comma separated values, space separated values, column separated values, something, or JSON files, XML files, even semi-structured data. They can all fit into Hive. Now the next case is, if we need response in seconds and low latency applications, I told you Hive is expected to be slow. Mm -hmm. And if you are looking for a faster solution, don't use Hive. In R, if RDBMS can solve, don't invest time in Hive. Very important point. Hive is not a replacement for RDBMS or something, okay? Because RDBMS systems are real-time systems and Hive is not something which can replace them. If your RDBMS can solve your most of your problems, then don't use Hive. Hive is specifically for huge amount of structured data. <clears throat> Say you want to create a table, size of the table is three terabytes. Very good, do it in Hive, query the table. Your SQL will be very easy, even though it takes some time, you will get the result. That is where your Hive's use case will come. So think about Hive like a translator, it's a translator. You write SQL, it speak MapReduce to Hadoop, right? And Hadoop gives the result, it shows as a table to you. So for you, the developer, everything is SQL and table. For Hadoop, everything is MapReduce and Hive stands in the middle. Now, what is the similarity with SQL uh, and uh, difference from SQL? Uh, Hive is very similar to SQL-like queries. It is based, uh, based on actually SQL 92 uh, framework and it is safe to say that its functions are mostly same. 
what is the difference from SQL? The major difference is that Hive query executes on Hadoop rather than traditional database. That means you cannot install Hive outside Hadoop. It works only on HDFS. This allows Hive to scale to handle huge data sets, which cannot be done by RDBMS. The internal execution of a Hive query is via a series of automatically generated MapReduce jobs. Right? So the next question naturally you will have is that do I understand Hive, but can I fine tune Hive? What about performance? Can I improve the performance? Can I do something with Hive? Yes, you can do. Now all Hive queries will be converted to MapReduce job. So why can't we write MapReduce ourselves? So this is one question people ask. See, Hive is converting everything into MapReduce. So why don't you just write MapReduce for God's sake, right? Why are you using Hive? Understanding the internals of Hadoop framework is must to write MapReduce. SQL engineers can quickly write Hive scripts. Now, if you want to write MapReduce, right, you have to learn Java or Python or Ruby or C Sharp, right? Then you have to implement your logic or using MapReduce framework. You have to write your custom mapper, custom reducer, package it as a jar file, re resolve all the complexities, errors. Now here, you don't have to do any debugging, anything. Create a table, write your query, and it just works. That is how it works. So the next point is that, now talking about the real world. Okay, so let's suppose you learn Hive in, in, in our IntelliPath course and you master Hive. And what did I teach you? I taught you that Hive is a SQL interface to Hadoop. Fine, you understand that, right? And then you go to a real world project, okay? And then you go to the project and say that, you know what, I'm an expert in Hive. Hmm? An expert in Hive. I know Hive really well. You are gonna say to your project. And these guys are gonna tell you that, you know what, you can use Hive or you can use Hive plus this. You can use Impala. You can use Spark SQL. You can use Phoenix. What did I just do? I just blew your mind out of proportion. So when you go to a real project, in a real world project, and you ask them, okay, I have data on Hadoop, give me a SQL tool, they will either give you Hive, or give you Hive plus this, or give you Impala, or give you Spark SQL, or give you Phoenix. And you are like, oh my God, there is only Hive that is a SQL interface. Now I am in a dilemma, because these guys are talking about this, Impala, Spark SQL, Phoenix, and trust me, if you write a SQL query, it will be executed the same way in all these platforms. You write a group by query, Hive will execute it, Hive plus Thais will execute it, Impala will execute it, Spark SQL will execute it, Phoenix will also execute it. So the real question is, what are these different tools? Right, so this is some real world info to you, please, right? See, Hive is the original tool. This came first, right? So Hive is the first Avenger. So this is the first Avenger. So this is the first guy who came into the world, right? So when Hive came, everybody was happy. So people said, all right, fantastic. Now I got SQL interface. I can write a query and you know what? The query executes nice. But over a period of time, over a period of time, people didn't really like Hive. People said like, all right, Hive is great, but the problem is that the queries are damn slow. You know, the other day I wrote a query, it took a day to give me the result. I don't really like Hive. We need something else. That is when, that is when the company called Hortonworks started proposing Hive and this. Now what happens here is that if you access a Hortonworks Hadoop cluster, Hmm? and you write a Hive query, say execute, the Hive query will be converted into this, not MapReduce. So original Hive is Hive plus MapReduce. 
Hortonworks Highway is Hive plus Thais. So what is Thais? Thais is a framework, uh, Apache framework. Probably if you're interested, you dig deeper. Well, Thais is created uh, to uh, make map reduce faster. So I don't want to get into details of Thais. I'm just giving you some extra information. For the time being, understand that Thais is a framework which is built uh, to overcome the problems in MapReduce. MapReduce is ideally slow. MapReduce is normally slow, right? So some guys built something called Thais and Thais also uses mappers and reducers and all, but Thais is much, much faster than uh, your MapReduce, right? So Thais is a Hindi word. It's, it stands for speed and it is created by Indians. It is uh, the next level of MapReduce, you can say. So what Hortonworks did, they said, See, what Hortonworks did, they said, why don't we club Hive and Thay so that queries are faster? Are you getting the point? So if you are on a Hortonworks cluster, you write a Hive query, say execute, you will see a Thay's job firing. You will never see a map reduce job firing because Hortonworks promotes Thay's. Even though Thay's is Apache open source, Hortonworks says they promote Thay's and they say that's their, their, their queries are faster. So your first Avenger original Hive is damn slow. Hmm? Now Hive plus Thais, this guy is interactive. Interactive query means it is faster but not real time. So if you are writing a Hive query on a Hortonworks cluster, it uses Thais as an execution engine and it is faster. But it's not real time or something. It's kind of like faster. So when Hortonworks started this, even before that, there is another company called Cloudera. Hmm? There is a company called Cloudera. Cloudera, what they did, they invented something called Impala. Impala is again built on top of Hive. Impala is a SQL interface. But what happens if you write a SQL query on top of Impala, it will run it using a daemon called Impala D. It doesn't use MapReduce. It doesn't use Thais. It uses a proprietary Impala D to run. So this is promoted by Cloudera and this is also interactive. Now Hortonworks will say that Hive plus this is faster. Cloudera will say Impala is faster. That is a war going on for like past four years. Nobody knows. Both are same. But whether it is Hive plus this or Impala, it's again a SQL interface for you. Only difference if you're on a Hortonworks cluster, the execution is done by this. <clears throat> if you're on a Cloudera cluster, Execution is done by a daemon called Impala. And there is somebody called Spark. Spark has a SQL interface that's called Spark SQL. If you write a query on Spark SQL, again, same SQL, this will be com uh, converted into Spark. And this is almost real time. So this is faster. Look at this. Look at this. Hive taste, Hive taste, SQL, Hive. This, this, but in Hortonworks, you can also say that I don't want this, I want MapReduce. They can switch the engine. So these are all additional information, extra information, but good to know things, right? So Phoenix is SQL interface on top of NoSQL. That means HBase is your NoSQL database right and hbase doesn't understand sql so if you do not know the language of hbase you install phoenix you write your sql query it's going to convert in the language of hbase show you the result original hive plus map reduce is batch processing very very slow Thais and impala are similar interactive but Thais is hortonworks impala is cloudera that means you will never see Thais on cloudera and impala on hortonworks past spark sql is again on spark framework phoenix is on hbase difference between different Hive. For example, you have something called Hive. Then you have something called Hive Server 1. Then you have something called Hive Server 2 plus B line. So what are these terms? What is pure Hive? 
what do you mean by hive server 1 what do you mean by hive server 2 plus b line see so this is something which you have to understand from the technical point of view originally only hive was there and this is just a client side application with with uh, with a with an interactive shell meaning the original hive what you call the pure hive is just a client side application that means if you are a developer you take your laptop install hive you get a command line hmm? in the command line you say create a table drop a table do the query blah 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 it just works there is no server only client and that is what I was explaining in my picture also right I, I drew a picture where I was telling you that you know hive is just a client side application so when hive was invented people were really happy they said oh my god that's really great so we can get a shell and we can write commands and we can work with hive that is nice but later people started thinking so how do you connect your database can you tell me you have an oracle database hmm? the oracle database is sitting in some place how do you connect it with the oracle database or microsoft sql database what do you use to connect you need a client side tool something like mysql workbench or something right you need a client side tool to connect using jdbc or odbc right jdbc odbc connections can be made but for that yeah you will have a server where oracle is running you need an oracle client some sql client right so what people thought is like okay everything is nice about hive but i cannot connect to hive from my uh, sql clients why because hive was just a command line look at here that is when hive server one came this guy will allow jdbc or odbc connections from your regular sql clients that means hive server one means there will be a server running in a hadoop cluster clear hive server one is a server which is running in the hadoop cluster you in your laptop if you install hive you can open the command prompt and type queries or you can use your regular sql client tools to connect to the hive server and perform all the activities right so hive server one the option is that you can create jdbc connections from your sql client directly to hive so you can insert into a table you know you can do whatever queries you want you can directly run in your client very easy you don't have to use the command prompt you can use a command prompt also so people were really happy hey great we have hive server we can connect we can run queries blah 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 but this lacked concurrency meaning there was no concurrency or consistency in hive server one that means if multiple users create sessions to hive it was impossible to handle the sessions data persistence data concurrency issues were there that is where hive server 2 came hive server 2 first of all it also allows allows your jdbc odbc connections it provides concurrency and it has a new client side command line tool called b line that is hive server 2 so hive server 2 is kind of like an upgrade to hive server 1 the basic difference is that it, it also allows jdbc odbc but it provides concurrency that means multiple jdbc odbc connections are possible you can work with hive but they have redesigned the cli of hive and the new cli is called b line still it supports the old cli and the new cli is called b line b line is actually a client which you can install like SQL client so I can go to a computer install BLine client from there I can make a connection request to the hive server 2 and start working in the hive 
Uh, so the Hive server will be installed inside your cluster. The architecture of Hive. Now you can see a person, okay, and he is using the Hive query language. Now you can, if you are a person, either you can interact with Hive through CLI. That is what I'm saying. CLI means, means it can be the B-line client or regular command line, Hive shell. I will show you the Hive shell. It's an interactive shell. Or JDBC, ODBC. That means you are having a SQL client. From there, you can connect. Or a web UI. Hive also provides a web UI. Hmm? And whatever ways, look at the arrow. If you are using the CLI, directly you will be hitting Hive. That means hitting Hive in the sense, if you are using the CLI, you will be directly creating tables, etc., etc. But if you are using the JDBC, ODBC, these sessions are handled by Hive Server 2. So we are having Hive Server 2. So the main purpose of Hive Server 2 is to handle this multiple sessions that are created by users through JDBC, ODBC. That is why there is a difference in the arrow. CLI means you are directly invoking Hive. JDBC, ODBC means you are connecting through the Hive server. So either you use CLI or you use JDBC, ODBC. Now, where will I install Hive server 2? It is not necessary that you have to install it inside a Hadoop cluster, right? It can be outside the Hadoop cluster also. See, see this picture? <clears throat> Your Hive server 2 is outside the Hadoop cluster in this picture. Now, so like I explained, you sit, if you use CLI, directly it is Hive. If you use JDBC, ODBC, it goes through Hive server. But again, the sessions are handled by Hive server, but it is ultimately Hive, right? Uh, now, in the picture, it is very clearly shown that the Hadoop cluster is separate. That means Hive server need not be installed inside a Hadoop cluster. It can be outside. In most of the cases, it is uh, installed outside as well, right? Now, inside the Hive architecture, you can see compiler, optimizer, executor. But how does Hive know where is the data or in other words what about metadata see for any database or data warehouse or any system you need to store metadata what about the metadata hmm? so in hive what happens there is something called meta store service what is Metastore service? It is a service running to handle metadata. What is metadata? The definition of your table, the definition of your database, the schema of your table, all this is metadata. So you need to store the metadata somewhere, right? So that is what is handled by this Metastore service. By default, Hive uses something called embedded Metastore. Metastore. This means it stores the metadata in built-in Derby database. So what happens is that by default if you are downloading and installing Hive, it comes with a database called Derby. Apache Derby. Apache Derby is a database. And it will use this Derby database to store the metadata. Clear? So that is called embedded metastore. Embedded metastore means by default, if you just download and install Hive, Hive will need some place to store the metadata. So it by default comes with this Apache Derby database and it starts using Derby to store the metadata. You don't have to do anything. It will be all configured. Okay, so this embedded metastore is good because you're saying that if I'm downloading and installing Hive, right, it will come with a database and it will store the metadata in the database. This is all good. But this Derby has a drawback. The Derby database is a single instance database. That means it will allow only one connection at a time. 
that means if you are using the embedded meta store of hive only one person can access hive so that is a drawback so what you can do is that you can configure your own database as metadata storage for hive example mysql so this is what we do in production meaning in production what we do is that we will download and install hive now we know that hive will start working automatically because it will use derby to store the metadata but when it is using derby to store the metadata right what happens is that it will allow only one connection at a time because derby will allow only one connection so we don't do that what we do is that we will configure something like mysql and ask how to store the metadata in mysql so that multiple people can access hive the latest version of hive allows updates but all other versions of hive by default does not allow updates because remember it is hadoop hadoop is a write once read many system in hadoop there is no update pro process right you copy the data you delete the data you again copy the data it is all writing the data and reading many times but the latest version of hive allows you to do that it selectively can update it okay it can refer to the position of the block in the data node so hive can by default talk to hadoop it can understand where is your data and accordingly it can do so what you need to understand is that if you are practicing hive on the cloudera vm if you are practicing hive on the cloudera vm you are using embedded meta store that means there is a derby inside and that is storing all your metadata very simple but if you go to a company and start working on hive right then the metadata will be stored in a separate database like mysql that is the difference so two types of metadata storages are possible so if a user write a query the query will be accepted by somebody called a driver the driver is not shown in the picture but there is a driver and the driver will pass it to somebody called compiler hmm? compiler will check with the meta store to get the metadata and compile your query the optimizer will optimize it and give to executor executor is your map reduce and map reduce will run your query in the cluster so step number 1 user writes the query and the query comes to hive okay and first step is compiling the query now you won't simply compile the query because you need the metadata so you will check with the meta store metadata store about the metadata once you get the metadata you compile the query <coughs> and there is a component called optimizer it will optimize your map reduce code so that it can perform better and then give it to another component called executor executor is normally your map reduce program i mean map reduce uh, engine and that will execute your query and show the uh, result there are two situations okay again this is coming mostly from the practical uh, aspect if you are having a small hadoop cluster let's say you are having only three servers i mean three data nodes four data nodes etc and so it's a very small cluster right and normally this cluster cluster will be accessed by only couple of guys so if you are sitting here you have a computer entire hive will be installed here your hive server will be running everything will be running here why because it's a small cluster there is no point in installing here and then connecting you can install hive but usually so i'm i'm talking different use cases <clears throat> i'm talking different use cases in small hadoop clusters where you are having 3 to 4 data nodes and all you will not do any heavy lifting hmm? why are you creating small hadoop clusters it might be for proof of concept you know you are not actually running any production workload so that means in this case there is no hive component in the hadoop cluster entire hive package is on your machine hive server hive cli whatever you call anything starting with hive is on your computer nothing is there in the cluster are you getting my point why why because either you or only your friend will be accessing this and you don't need a separate client server and all right because it's a very small cluster so you install all the package 
on your computer and then you can also install SQL client on your computer and create a JDBC connection from here it will connect etc etc but everything will be on your computer because it is a small Hadoop cluster. Now what if it is a very big Hadoop cluster? In a very large Hadoop cluster Hmm? So this is a large Hadoop cluster, say thousands of data nodes. You will have something called a gateway node. Have you guys guys heard about this? What is a gateway node? Have you guys heard about this? No, I think. What is a gateway node? This guy will have connectivity with Hadoop. Hmm? and it's a Linux machine imagine it's a Linux machine here you will install everything you will have your Hadoop client here you will be having your uh, what you say Hive server here and maybe pig everything will be installed here and what you do is what you do is that if you're sitting here if you're sitting here right you have a laptop you don't install here maybe on your laptop this is your laptop right so this guy is sitting here this guy is sitting here okay what he can do is that he can do multiple things he can SSH to this machine connect to this machine so he he, he log into this machine and from here he can type hive he get a command prompt start working on the cluster now another guy is sitting here he has a laptop okay and here he has installed uh, a, a, let's say SQL workbench, workbench SQL client hmm? now if he open the SQL workbench it will connect to this and from here it will connect to this right so what is the gateway node gateway node is nothing but is a server okay it acts like an intermediate between you and Hadoop cluster in large Hadoop clusters you will not be directly logging onto the cluster you will never even see your cluster it is strictly prohibited you cannot access your cluster all you do is that you connect to this gateway node from here you can do anything so if you prefer the CLI what you do is that you log on to this uh, gateway node using SSH from there you you are you are on the gateway node you type uh, high, uh, high CLI you get high CLI or if you're having a SQL client okay you you give the uh, details of this gateway and this will connect to the gateway from there it will connect to the large cluster <clears throat> right so all the client packages are actually installed in the gateway node that is my point so we have two options either you log on to the gateway node so now you log into the gateway node and open the command prompt and say hit hive you will see the hive shell you start working or if you're having a SQL work workbench your hive server will be running on this gateway node okay SQL workbench will connect to hive server and to your cluster thank you